Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Oh, whoa. Why I decided to make this video, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about art because, you know, I guess I could say I'm an artist. There's probably much more scholarly looks at this, but yeah, when it comes to the famous Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, a man known as Gabriel Dante Rossetti, or just as everybody calls him, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, um, he would very much heavily rely on a repertoire of live models for his works, and many of them were, uh, how do I put it? linked more closely to his personal life. So what I'm getting at is people mistake Alexa Wilding for his most iconic model, which is probably very, very much disputed, for his wife, Lizzie Sedol. So I'm going to explain their differences because a lot of people do get them mixed up. So this is kind of like a spur of the moment video because I felt like talking about it. Disclaimer, guys. I love Pre-Raphaelite art. Dante Gabriel Rossetti is probably one of my favorite artists and the Pre-Raphaelite look has always been a huge influence on me personally, on my own fashion choices, and on my artwork and, I guess, aesthetic choices. Um, but it's hard sometimes when the clothing to wear that is pre-Raphaelite-esque, it's very hard to find. And for me, it also is very expensive sometimes. Listen, if anybody wants to buy me beautiful pre-Raphaelite-esque clothes, let me know, because uh, I need some. It's also kind of hard to because my body type wasn't really made for the clothes that people are making that are pre raphaelite but you can't blame that. That's the society we live in, guys! Yeah. Please, if you want to buy me nice clothes, definitely, definitely get in contact with me and I will link you to my PayPal so I can buy nice, beautiful, handmade, pre-Raphaelite clothes from Etsy. Elizabeth Eleanor Sidall. Ooh, this, this flyaway hair. It's probably gonna be like that the whole video. Anyways, Elizabeth Eleanor Sidall. Or, quite coolly, and shall I say, aesthetic. Known as Lizzie Sidall. Um, real quick, Rossetti made a lot of paintings that very much influenced the aesthetic movement. Um, it seeped into everything, including my favorite fashion designers and one of my inspirations, Ozzy Clark. I placed a link to a video essay by the YouTube channel, The Ultimate Fashion History. Love her stuff. She does really good breakdowns of different fashion stuff and subject matter. She did a really good breakdown of his life and his work. Wow. Imagine me being able to afford vintage Ozzy Clark clothes. Imagine one of my favorite designers, style icons, and all that other stuff saw me as a viable customer and designed clothes that could possibly fit me. But that would have been a pipe dream! <laughs> wow, he only really designed and structured stuff for a specific body type. Woohoo! Because you know, body gatekeeping guys. Double woohoo. Yeah. Back to the subject matter. We are getting off track. Lizzie was a model. Um, she not only just modeled famously for Rossetti, she actually modeled for other pre raphaelite painters too before being Rossetti's wife and an artistic pupil to him. She was also, how do I put it, seen as the most famous, ahem, 
model, and muse because they were married and uh, good old DGR wore his heart on his sleeve and had his work closely linked most of the time to his personal life, hence why we get a bad BBC show about it. Nope. <sighs> I'm finding it hard to draw under such. Very depressing. Uh. This is very intense because each time I sit down to draw, I realize that, like Beatrice, you are my destiny. We've met before. We are downtown and Beatrice. Nope. Never again. Never. Never, ever, ever. Ever. <coughs> so Lizzie had a very distinct look. Big thing about her is her striking red hair. My hair is obviously not red, but here is a picture of her striking red hair. And she had some very soft yet high angular cheekbone face. I.e. the thing that British man would go bonkers for back, 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 back in the day. Eventually, because her more plain and subdued look was at first a drawing point for how she broke into the modeling industry, the modeling industry at the time being mostly modeling for obviously paintings. She was actually an artist herself and was actually looking to break into that industry but ended up eventually getting led to being a model and wrapped up within a bunch of talented yet kind of man-child artists. I'm looking at you, Rossetti. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go far into her life, especially because I don't have access to my old vintage books on Rossetti and his work currently, and the fact that scholarly writing about her and just art in general is unfortunately mostly behind a paywall and I'm not in college anymore to, you know, leisurely access it. But yeah, most of my vintage and cool books about pre-Raphaelite artwork and Rossetti are kind of packed away right now because I never unpacked them. So I don't really have a lot of access to stuff. So this is based off of my prior knowledge to doing a lot of research work on them in my old, good old art history classes. Well, I was a pain in the butt when we got to the pre raphaelite um, subject matter when I was taking that one art history class, or actually two of them, because one time a teacher tried to skip it, I was just like, don't you dare! So, yeah. You're probably going to most recognize her in fellow pre raphaelite John Everett Millay's famous painting depicting the death of Ophelia drowning by possible suicide or just, you know, falling into the river creek and drowning from Shakespeare's Hamlet. That painting of Ophelia dying very aesthetically, the painting is very seriously well done though like it it's a it's a really well-made painting but i'm also a fan of this kind of art style lizzie actually almost actually died in the bathtub of water when she laid in there when she was modeling for the painting fun fact um look it up and the most famous of rossetti paintings she showed up in was the beat of beatrix and the wedding portrait. Vita Beatrix was actually a painting memorializing her after her tragic death and uneasy marriage to Rossetti. He depicts her as the character of Beatrice, a woman who has shown up in the works of Italian poet Dante, a poet that Rossetti was a fanboy of. So, with knowing who Lizzie is, enter in Alexa Wilding. This is actually the woman who appeared the most of all of his models in his finished portraits. Many people who cite their favorite Rossetti paintings or ones that they find are the most aesthetically inspiring will often say that they feature Lizzie when actually they weren't. They were a model named Alexa Wilding 
or they were rendered to later have Alexa's face in touch up. And actually, Alexa Wilding is just her cool girl name. She's actually real life named Alice Wilding, but you know, Alexa, cool girl name, you know what I mean? So why do people mistake Alexa for Lizzie? Let me break it down. One main simple reason as to why this might commonly happen. There is little written about Alexa, so we don't have a very good understanding of her and her relationship with Rossetti. So Rossetti did not, as we know, have any kind of romantic or sexual relations with Alexa. And you know, how do I put it? So often the most talked about models when it comes to Dante, Dante's paintings, his life, and scholarly research and critique, they often focus on the models that were very closely linked to his personal life when it comes to things, especially like his romantic and sexual life. So the most talked about models are going to be like people like Lizzie because he was married to her and saw her as a muse because of those connections also. And you know, drama and soap opera stuff, you know? Cause we got to uh, have a juicy, juicy story about all of the scandalous things that he was doing with his models that sat for him. Ooh, yee. Hey, Colton, you call up mommy, it's Gabriel. No, she's a fiery redhead with a kiss like a suction pump. Comes by the name of Lizzie. It's for me. Now, I know I'm not allowed to be intimate. I want it more than I did before. I want it more than No. Oh, no. Uh, I do like, uh, Aiden Turner, though, so... So I think it's very interesting that the woman who frequented the most and his most loved paintings is barely talked about or given the recognition that she deserves, in my opinion, when it comes to, like, the mainstream understanding of pre-Raphaelite art, specifically Rossetti's art, and it's probably kind of rude because just because she didn't have any ulterior connections to him by just being an artist's inspiration and muse for the sake of art and not, you know, for his personal life, it's kind of awful. She just, it seems like she just sat for him and she enjoyed it, I guess. I don't know. There isn't much about her, but she didn't have any interest in him and there isn't any kind of written records of him having an, uh, fair with her so still sucks though because i'm a huge fan of the alexa wilding paintings and she barely just gets any recognition it's like oh my god this girl was in paintings that helped usher in many aesthetic movements and to just act like lizzie appeared in those paintings it just sucks for her i mean Florence from Florence and the Machine is obviously leaning heavy on the style of people like Rossetti in his paintings. We do know that she, Alexa Wilding, was a working class girl just like Lizzie and had similar features which often got blurred actually when painting and doing studies of her. So there is some possibility that the confusion also comes from the fact is that there are slight similarities of them, but they are still different. But when he was doing studies or working on his paintings that feature Alexa, there were times that sometimes he would add some Lizzie-esque features. But just so you know, most paintings that she is featured in features more of an idealized likeness to her, if that makes sense. Certain features are emphasized, exaggerated, or changed a bit, and they do very much set those paintings aside from 
what Lizzie looks like in comparison to Alexa, if that makes sense. For one, she has a much softer face than Lizzie, along with a more curvy figure similar to one of his famous models and mistresses, Fanny Cornforth. To the point where Fanny's face was painted over in the Lady Lilith painting because the guy he painted it for wasn't a fan of Fanny's face. <clears throat> Love the male gaze, guys. Love the male gaze. 1010 would do again. It really does kind of suck for Fanny because she endured so much fat shaming and slut shaming from art scholars and some of Rossetti's peers and close people. And it really is just awful. But you know, people, people be telling people how to live all the time and not having the moral high ground in the first place to tell people what to do with their lives, so. So obviously it is Alexa's face that shows up in these paintings, but he has an idealized, slightly tweaked version of her to kind of make her a separate character from what she really looked like. When he would paint Alexa's face, she would have very exaggerated Cupid's bow style lips, a long neck, and a bit more fuller eyebrows and softened features compared to photographs of her. The best thing that I can tell you when it comes to telling the differences between Lizzie and Alexa featured paintings is that his Lizzie paintings featured oil and watercolor works that were much more wispy, muted, and realistic, and often depict full scenes where Alexa featured in paintings where he switched to a more idealized, brightly colored, refined, and still realistic portraits, but that had a strong, feminine, and flowery, fantasy-esque aesthetic that everybody associates Rossetti paintings with. I get why there is probably some confusion for people that don't know too much about the history of Rossetti's and his paintings. Lizzie is his most famously known model and muse who had red hair and angular features, so I wouldn't be shocked if someone thought that the paintings looked similar. Paintings such as the Veronica Veronese, the Bower Meadow, Roman Window, a Sea Spell, you know, the paintings of the Rossetti pre-Raphaelite genre of art that influence the aesthetics of the pre-Raphaelite look were all Alexa Wilding based paintings and some paintings originally did have other models' face such as Fanny or Lizzie but they would eventually be replaced with Alexa's face during the painting process or later for touch-ups, as I mentioned earlier. Also, though many models did sit for Rossetti, because like he had a whole myriad of models, and they do often kind of look the same sometimes because he had a style, it's a very common trend for them to have similar faces sometimes, because we just kind of, you know, sometimes artists, how do I put it? They kind of get good at doing a certain kind of rendering and drafting of very specific things and features and bodies and faces in anatomy. That's why same face is always a problem for so many artists because they often get stuck into developing one kind of body type or several different stock stocks of body types or several different types of specific faces that they draw and use as their base. I do love how cool though, like the girls had like these whole like aesthetic vibes in like the, the 1800s and like they had these like cool stage names and like model nicknames and like everywhere in like this day and age like Vogue people do that and to be honest stuff like Lizzie Sadal would totally be on the cover of Vogue in like really like high fashion photo shoots and um they would have all had instagrams i am telling you right now which is totally fine because aesthetic instagrams are great one day girls are going to be posting one day i'll be as pretty 
as one of the girls in a Rossetti painting. Yeah, cool. So yeah, it's good to know as a person myself who is interested in pre-Raphaelite art and is big on the pre-Raphaelite aesthetic myself, it's good to have an on-file knowledge of who you get your aesthetics from and who's who in the paintings if you're gonna post them on the on the interwebs and put who the model was because the model is one of the biggest parts of a Rossetti painting. So yeah, cool.